For activity 5.3, we're going to be looking at work points, work axes, and work planes and creating those on an existing part in Inventor. Um, and in order to do that, the first thing you need to do as usual is go to your file folders, go to IED, and make sure that you have a folder called 5.3 work points, axes, and planes. And once you have that folder, you're going to need to download the part we're going to be working off of. So if you go to Canvas in our, our 5.3a module, under reference part, you'll see a 5.3 reference file. And you need to left click on that to download it. And then you'll see that pull, pull up in your download section of your browser. And if you hit the arrow right next to it, we can go and show in folder. And that'll show us where our file is actually located and most likely in our download section. And we can left click on that. I'm sorry, right click on that select cut and then navigate to our ID folder in 5.3 and then right click and paste And once you have that part there go ahead and get it open in inventor and your part should pull up and look something like this now before we get started with our work features including points axes and planes which will be up here in this work features panel I want to talk about the origin folder which is in your browser on the left hand side of the screen now you can find this origin folder and hit the plus button next to it to expand it. And what you'll notice is that you have some origin planes and origin axes. And these are the origin planes that are present when you initially start a 2D sketch in a new part. So if we go to a new part here, and I'm going to click the start 2D sketch, which you've all seen before. When you initially select a plane to work off of and create a sketch on, Generally, we select the XY plane, but there is also the YZ plane and the XZ plane, and then also these axes here in the middle that are part of those planes. We can call up any of these planes at any point in time, even after we've created our first sketch. So if we go back to our original part here, in our origin folder, if we hover over each of these, you can see our YZ plane, our XZ plane, and our XY plane. And they also have the X, Y, and Z origin axes. So if I needed to create another sketch and I didn't have a face to work off of, or a correct face to work off of, the first place to look is in your origin panel. So if I were to uh, select tar Start 2D Sketch, Normally I could come and select a face over here, but I could also go to my browser and select one of these planes and create a 2D sketch on that plane as well. So before you ever go in and create a new work feature, such as a plane or an axis or a point, go back to your browser to the origin folder and make sure that one of these existing planes or axes is not the one that you need. If it is the one you need, that's great. Go ahead and use that. If not, then we can go over to our work features panel and start adding points, axes, and planes. The first type of work feature that we're going to create or try to create is a point. So if you go to the work features panel here, we can click on point or there's a drop down menu here to the side. We're not going to talk about most of these. These are a little more advanced features we'll talk about later. So for right now, I'm just going to click on point. Now what this allows me to do is create a point. You can see that yellow mark when I hover over a corner. And it allows me to create a point that is not an actual sketch, but instead a work feature that I can then use to create other work features such as planes or axes. And then I can also use these to constrain sketches to and other work feature features to later. So if you just click on one corner, we'll start on this front corner here. You'll notice that it leaves that yellow mark there and over in our browser, it shows a work point. So I can, that work point will stay there until I delete it. Um, but if I don't want to use it for right now, I want to leave it here, but I don't want to be able to see it in my part. So if I right click on that work point and uncheck the visibility option, it'll disappear from my part, but it still shows up over here in my browser. So later on, if I need to use that, I can either click on it in the browser or I can right click and turn my visibility back on. The next work feature we need to discuss is work axes. So you'll notice this axis button here, or once again, you have a drop down to the right of it. And we have some different options in here. Several of these we won't talk about, but we will talk about this initial axis button. So if we click that, it allows us to place a work axis on the part. So if I hover over an edge, you'll notice the yellow line there. It'll allow me to put a work axis on that edge or on any, any edge that you select, you can put a work axis on. 
Where it's most useful is for cylinders. If I need to find the center point of this cylinder, if I just hover over the edge of this part, I can find the center axis of this cylinder. So you'll notice I hover over the edge and that yellow axis shows up. So if I left click on that, now I have a new work axis in my browser and it shows the center point. And I can go to my front view here to show you that that it shows at center point. Let me just drag this here just a little off axis so you can see it. But it shows that axis or that center axis of that cylinder, which can be extremely useful. Uh, another way that we can add an axis is if we go to the drop down menu, we can use through two points, which can be useful. So if I want to add a work axis between this front edge here, or this front point rather, and this bottom right point, I can select that first point, and then select the second point, and you'll notice that it adds a work axis that I can then use for other features. And the third type of axis that we'll look at is going to be between two planes. So if we look, go to this option here, intersection of two planes, if I want to add an, add an axis and I want it on this edge here, I could have just used the point, I'm sorry, the axis button and selected that edge. But in, this option allows me to select this plane and then the intersecting plane, and then that will also add a work axis for us to use. So once you've created all these, go ahead and go over to your browser and let's right click on each one and uncheck the visibility so we can get rid of those and then we'll move on to work planes. Work planes are probably the work feature you will use most often. Um, so we'll go ahead up to plane and hit the drop down and you'll notice that there's a lot of different options. We'll go through a few of them, the first one of which is going to be offset from plane. So we'll go ahead and left click on that. So any of these or er, faces of this part are can be used as work planes. But if we need to create a work plane that's slightly offset from one of these, we can click on any of these faces and I'll, we'll go ahead and click on this one. And you'll notice it'll show an arrow and then it'll give us a place to put a dimension. So if I go ahead and put 1.5, you'll notice that it shows that work plane offsetting from this plane 1.5 inches. Now if I wanted to go the opposite direction, I could throw a negative in front of that and it'll offset it the opposite direction. Now in this case, we would, it would have probably been better to go to the other side and offset from the other plane to do that. Um, but we could use the negative feature here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back to positive and then I'm gonna hit either enter or this check mark. And now I have a work plane that is offset exactly 1.5 inches from this face. And that can be really useful for features we're gonna learn later, uh, especially loft is one that we'll use later. Um, and this will be something that you will have to be able to do in order to use that feature. The next plane command we're going to use is the mid plane between two planes command. So we go ahead and click on that. One that will be really common is I'll have these two faces, so this face here, and then if I rotate around to the other side, this one, but I actually need a work plane in the center of that feature. So using this mid plane feature, I can select the first plane and select the second plane and it'll automatically create a work plane that is in the, in the center of that feature. So that can be extremely useful for a bunch of different scenarios that we'll go in depth on later. Angle around an edge is the next type of plane we're going to use. So if you go to angle to plane around edge, we'll select the plane itself and then select an edge. And then this is going to allow us to input a angle that we that will move this work plane to. So let's just use 45 degrees as an example. It's going to rotate that work plane about that edge 45 degrees, or we can go to the opposite direction, let's say 110 degrees, and it'll create a work plane that is 110 degrees from that face that we selected. So we'll go with 110 degrees and go ahead and hit the check mark. And that'll create a new plane here. So if we go to our front view, you can see the side view of that plane. The next one we'll go to is coplanar. I'm going to go back to my ISO view here. So if we go down to go up to plane, we're going to go to two coplanar edges. This will allow us to select two edges from our existing part and create a work plane through them. So in this case, I want to select this front edge here and this front edge here. And you'll notice before I even click, it shows a preview of where my work plane is going to be. But I'll go ahead and left click on that and kind of move this around here so you can see that work plane that is intersecting both those edges and giving us a work plane that goes through both of those edges. The next type of work plane we're going to talk about are tangent 
work planes. So the one we're going to talk about is tangent to surface and parallel to plane. So if we go ahead and select that option, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to rotate this model around here a bit, is select the surface we want our plane to be tangent to. So this is really our only option is this cylinder here. So I'll select that cylinder. And then I want to create a plane that is tangent to that and then parallel to this plane. And you'll notice as I hover over, it's going to give me a preview. I'm going to go ahead and left click on that and kind of rotate this around a bit and you'll notice that that plane is tangent to that cylinder and parallel to that plane. Now I can go back and undo that and I'm going to use that exact same feature again, tangent surface and parallel to plane. I'm going to select this cylinder and then this time I'm going to rotate this around and I want to hover over this option. And then this would be the same thing here too. So I could really select any of these faces and create a work plane that is tangent to that cylinder and then parallel to the plane. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one here. And you notice that makes it parallel, tangent, and then parallel. And I've created all the work planes that I would like to create. So go over to your browser and right click on each work plane and uncheck the visibility. And now I have all of these work features that I can use and hover over them and they show up just like it did in the origin panel. So if I want to create a 2D sketch, instead of showing it over here and clicking on it, I can go to my browser and select these. And let's say I want to make one on plane 5. And it'll allow me to create a sketch on plane 5. I'm going to hit finish sketch and I'm going to select undo twice because I want to get rid of that sketch. Um, this is a usually a better way to work because you don't have all of these features showing up over here in your part. It doesn't get too confusing, but you still have them over all over here in the browser as access. So once you get all of these work features created, go ahead to the iPro button and save your part and check with your instructor for any further instructions that you need.